Hello everyone and welcome to the Flow Wedging series. In this series of tutorials, I'll explain the workflow how to send graphs to the cloud using the Flow Wedging technology preview. Uh, we'll start with the basics, loading first from the Bifrost browser, the Aero Combustion Wedging. We'll load that and explain the basics of what's going on on the graphs here. Uh, we'll talk about the wedging parameters and how you can vary like different attributes. We'll talk about the wedging catch, how can you load and read the different files that you get from the cloud. I'll explain as well how to use the job monitor to check your jobs, how to send jobs to the cloud. And we also will create a render preview so we can render in Arnold to create a little sequence of images to check your results in the cloud. Then how we can check the results coming from the cloud, create a play blast, we will be creating as well our own little custom setups. With that said, I hope you are looking forward to this. Let's get started. All right, I have my open here. And um, by the way, I'm using uh, Bifrost 2.12 at the moment of this recording. So just be aware of that if you're using a newer version. Uh, maybe when you see this, maybe some of the workflow have changed uh, or some we, have, we might have also new nodes. So with that said, uh, we're going to open the wedging graph that comes with the Bifrost browser. And to get to the Bifrost browser, there is two ways. Uh, you can either open it through here, if you have the Bifrost graph editor open, or you can always go to Window and go to Bifrost browser. And if we were to wedge in here, I'll open this. You can double click or say import, click on import. And for those who don't know what the Bifrost browser is, it's basically a series of graphs that the Bifrost team provides for you to start learning Bifrost. As you can see, we have different categories. Uh, like strands, tags, scatter, smoke, fire, liquid, and so on. And you can use them as a starting point, so just to learn. They all come with very excellent documentation, so explain the, they try to explain basically each step. So yeah, go ahead and play with it, because you're going to learn a lot just looking through this with these graphs. I'm going to hide the grid, and let's keep going. All right, so I have the waging combustion graph here open. And I'll explain, I'll try to explain step by step, but I'm not going to go very into depth since this is a little bit outside of the scope of this tutorial. We'll start here. Let me actually turn off first a few things. I'm going to disconnect that there and then turn off these spheres as well. And let's start here with the particle solver. Uh, let me add a terminal here so we can view uh, what's going on with this. All right, so we have a sphere and basically this is, the, is what we're using for emission. Uh, we have two body source nodes and then the particle solver. Uh, this is the brain. Then we have using an influence, which is just kind of like a force, you can call it, or kind of something that's modifying your scene uh, on each time step. And then we have the solver settings. So the solver setting is going to be your basic uh, gravity, and if you want to have self collision between particles, stored collisions, and this is useful for other stuff. If you want to change the display of the particles as well, and uh, and if you want to have an ID and the sources, then we have again the source particles, which is basically where you fit in uh, the sphere, and we have uh, a different options right here. I'm gonna go very quickly through this. Just keep in mind that if you want to have more detailed information about any of the nodes, you can always go to the info tab here, and it's gonna explain a lot more in detail what I'm trying to explain here. So it's always good to and useful to visit this tab right here. So the source particle is basically we're emitting for one frame, an option here to uh, basically pass through points, meaning that if you scatter points here and you want to use those exact points, you can use this option here. And then we have their typical properties like a speed direction. If you want to use the normals from the mesh to uh, push those particles a spread, if you want inherent velocity, for example, if it is animated or not, uh, how much bounciness and if you want to live forever or not, uh, age limit is basically the life of the particles. So right now this is in seconds, so it's 2.5 seconds and then the size of the particles as well. Uh, the body source node, which allow you to do is basically randomize different attributes of this source. So in this example, we are randomizing the age limit, which is the life, and then the size of the, of the particles. And uh, when you use these very source nodes, uh, keep in mind that whatever you have here is going to be overridden by this or override by these nodes or uh, age limit and size. So in other words, 
uh, 2.5 and 1, they're given override by these settings. And these settings, they get updated on each time step as well. So if you have animation, for example, they're going to be animated. And right now we have age limit, so the particle is going to live between 1.25 seconds to 2.7. Uh, it's animated again, and you can put also a bias. So uh, you can go positive and negative. And again, go to the info tab here. It's going to play a lot in a lot more detail. A quick tip here. Let's say that you are like looking at this and you want to see which uh, which attributes you're randomizing. You can do uh, you can click here in the name and then open and close curly brackets and then just add the proper uh, the uh, in this example like the name of the parameters. For example, you can add whatever you want here. I'm doing the property, which is the attribute. So I'm gonna do this for both. Again, open curly brackets, property, close curly brackets and then do that. You can also add, I mean, anything really, to be honest. So another tip here, if you press T, you can see the original name of the nodes. For whatever reason, I delete this. Uh, you can still see what node is this without going into the node. Basically, that is the, the, the advantage that you can see all in the graph here. All right, so then we have a modifier influence. And basically what this allows you to do, if you enter like a an attribute here, like in this example, it's point size. We're multiplying this property by 0.9, meaning that uh, the older that this particle gets, the smaller it's going to be. So if we press play, let me press P here so we can start looking at this. You can see that this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it kind of basically just disappear. You can tell. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but at the end, they go away. And that's it. So then, then we uh, the output of the particle solver goes into the source error. So now we are in the aero part of the simulation. All right. So then, as I was saying, we have the particle, and that is getting fed into the source error. And we have three actually source errors. You can put as many as you want. And this is the aero solver again. The brain. We have this uh, a collider here. We have more forces. And we have uh, the solver settings as well. Again, we have three sources here. So let's see what's going on quickly. The source uh, obviously is going to have different uh, properties here than the particle source. But it's, they all kind of look the same. As you can see, all the solvers are very similar. So when you learn one, you can you actually can get used to like how the solvers work in Bifrost. It's very similar. By the way, I didn't mention this, but in you have, all the solver have these additional properties here. And if you right click, for example, for Aero, we have this uh, source fuel, which actually we need for explosions and fire and all that. But if we go into the source particle, we're going to have a different uh, different options. And you can see that it's particles, but then also we have a common and then a set property. So all of them are going to have this common one because you can put Aero I mean, color to all of them. And then the set property basically is uh, if you set this one up, uh, you can set uh, an attribute here that is going to be it's going to be read at the beginning of the, the simulation. If you need a rest, for example, for later on, that is useful or any kind of attribute that you want. This is an auto port, so you can change this to a mat float if you need a vector or a scalar, so it can be changed. Again, so so we have the source fuel, and then uh, we have the different properties. And actually, Bifrost chip with different types of fuel. So we have propane, butane. Uh, so as you can see here, the fuel properties. They, we have a few, just a few settings here. Again, go to the info tab. Uh, that's going to be the last time that I said that uh, for more information. And then aero properties. We have a speed, uh, temperature, uh, the density, the fog. And then you have the detail side, which is the resolution of your fluid sim. So the lower you go, the higher quality sim you're going to have at expense of computational time, meaning that it's just going to take longer to compute. Then this is for if you, let's say, that you feed a, a geo, for example, or points. It's going to do a conversion on the fly here if you want to do that. A start frame, end frame, same. Uh, the resolution mode and... And then we have another source here. So this is coming from the particles. We're feeding the particles. Then this is the spark, which is actually uh, this main sphere that we have here. We have another body source property here. And basically, this is actually randomizing the temperature for this source error. Another fuel. And then we're using butane in this one. In the one before, I believe we were using propane. And then we have a third 
Sorcerer, which also we are randomizing temperature, and then we are using methane. And these are the other two, so if I now preview this, these are these other two spheres that we have here. So it's just additional fuel on this. Then we have the collider, which is just this cube right here. And the collider, you have also different options. Uh, and then influences, forces, or modifying properties. So we have the vorticity influence, which is getting modified by basically the density. Then we have a noise, and if we go inside, this is a compound. You can see that we're grabbing here the velocity field, and that's basically getting multiplied by this noise. And then we are doing some math here. Again, read this. I'm not going to go very into that, but it's very self-explanatory. Then we have the setting here, the solver settings, and then here are your typical gravity, uh, buoyancy, accuracy of the solver, and then diagnostics, which are actually important. All the solver settings, they have this option here. In the particle solver, it's a lot simpler, but here you can do, uh, in the area, it's a little bit more, uh, you, you have more stuff to diagnose. Then uh, if you right click here, uh, we're gonna have a few options for aero and for fire when you combustion or explosions. And that is what we have right here. Again, more options, more settings. Uh, and then finally, we have the wedge parameter node, which basically is going to allow us to do vary these uh, different attributes. I'll explain this more in detail a bit later. And then after that, we are going out. We are deleting all the, if we look at the data browser here before, uh, let me connect this because it's not computing. So if we look at the browser here, we're going to see all these different attributes that the arrow uh, basically outputs. And some of these you might need for, you know, both sim and some you probably won't. So the most common ones are density, temperature, and velocity, usually for any kind of explosion, smokes, and stuff like that. But again, if you need another one, you can always add it here. But it's good to do this before you catch in, by the way, because this is going to reduce actually the size of your files in your hard drive. And then also, you know, when you play your cache, it's going to uh, it's play a lot faster because it's not going to be loading all those attributes as well. So it's actually very good to delete what you don't need. Not just in Aero, in particles everywhere, basically. Then we have an assigned material. And then basically we go out with a wedding cache. And this is what we're going to be using for sending stuff to the flow wedging cloud option here. And that is a quick overview of the graph. In the next video, I'll explain a little, a little more in detail how to send stuff and how to play with the wedging nodes. Thanks.